Ralph Harris is making his way down to the ledger area where he's going to perform for this large crowd here today, as you can see. And uh, he'll be joined a little later by the Southern District's Youth Concert Band. And his daughter is going to present the sash to the Derby winner. I had lunch with uh, his daughter, Bindi, and she's very, very excited about the whole uh, thing. As a matter of fact, I said to her, one question, what happens, Bindi, if it's a dead heat? He said, I never thought of it. Righto, gentlemen, we'll be back with all the action at Ascot here in Western Australia shortly for the running of the $200,000 Australian Derby in just a moment. Welcome back, Australia, to the Channel 7 Network, and we're coming live today, of course, from Ascot Racecourse. Uh, all is in readiness for the running of the Channel 7 $200,000 Australian Derby. But in the meantime, it's that international entertainer, also from Bass and Dean, here in Western Australia, his birthplace, Rolf Harris, assembled at the moment with the Southern District's Youth Concert Band. They're just about to get underway with, I think, Walsing Matilda, which has been included in the program today. Yes, there's been an insert into the race book today of Walsing Matilda, so this very vast crowd that Bill was telling you about just a while ago will be invited to sing along with Rolf and, of course, uh, the Southern District's youth band as we get very close now to a start for the 1978 Channel 7 Australian Derby. All eyes on Rolf. I think uh, they're far enough away. Shall we do it, folks? I didn't actually hear you. Shall we do it? Sam, after you. Here we go. Once a jolly swagman camp by a... Hang on a minute, Sam, hang on a minute, hang on a minute. Just a minute. There's a bloody fella up there not even moved. Aren't you in this? This is being seen interstate all over Australia. Let's show them how we can do it. Take it again, Sam. Camp by a billabong Under the shade of a coolabar tree And he sang as he watched And waited till his billy boy You'll come a waltzing Matilda with me Everybody! Waltzing Matilda Waltzing Matilda You'll come a waltzing Matilda with me And he sang as he watched And waited till his billy boy You'll come a waltzing Matilda with me Then down came a jump buck to drink at that billabong Up jumped the swag man and grabbed him with glee And he sang as he shot that jump buck in his tucker bag You'll come the wild sing Matilda with me I'll sing Matilda Up rode the squatter, mounted on his thoroughbred. Down came the troopers, one, two, three. Right out, where's that jolly jump buck that you got in your sucker bag? You come the waltzing Matilda with me. Waltzing Matilda, waltzing Matilda. You come the waltzing Matilda with me. Right out, where's that jolly jump buck that you got in your sucker bag? You come a waltzing Matilda with me. So up jumped the swam and sprang into that billabong. You'll never take me alive, said he. And his ghost may be there as you pass by that billabong. You come a waltzing Matilda with me. Last chance.
Rolf Harris uh, entertaining here at Ascot today as we prepare now for a start to the Channel 7 $200,000 Australian Derby. And uh, for comments on the event, Bill Collins. Well, uh, I noticed some people in the crowd didn't actually sing along with the words that Rolf Harris and his gang were singing. They were singing along, came Dulcify and charged straight at the winning post. You'll never catch me today, said he. <laughs> and that's so true too. Well, we'll know in four or five minutes, Jack, because just, uh, I think, a final check from you on the prices as we see Dulcify there in the screen with champion jockey Johnny Miller. Run through the prices, Jack. Right, uh, Dulcify six to four, Gilby 33 to one, Ken Karma nine to two, Pleasant Friend 16 to one, Regal Jester six to one, been back from 10 to one, Regimental Honor 12 to one, Sovereign, uh, Sovereign Shell 16 to one, Swan's Pride, seven to one. Teddy Doon, four to one. Bell Talk, 66 to one. And Hasten Lass, 33 to one. Jack, looking through the six previous Australian Derby winners, there is one thing about the race that does make it a champion's race, is that you look through the winning trainers, there are only four trainers have won the six races. J.B. Cummings, C.S. Hayes, T.J. Smith and G.M. Hanlon. And of course then you look through the jockeys, Bill, J.J. Miller three times, Peter Cook, David Bronson and Harry White. So you can say it's a great trainer's race and a great jockey's race. And now the runners are moving into the stalls for the start of the Australian Derby, the $200,000 event. Now they're moving up on the inside. Regal Jester has gone in well from Dulcify, followed by Ken Karma. Gilby is in line, stands up quite well with Swan's Pride. Pleasant Prince is in. Gentlemen, would you mind taking me off the uh, your earphones? Thank you. They're racing now in the Australian Derby. They've jumped in a good line. Swan's Pride, one of the first out with Dulcify. Getting away well, Sovereign Shell. Hasten Lass is also up near the leaders as they settle down. And Bell Talk hitting them all off from Teddy Doon. Coming down towards the judge the first time now. And Bell Talk a length in front of Sovereign Shell. One and a half lengths further back then. Pleasant Prince on the inside of Hasten Lass the Grey and a length Teddy Doon. One and a half to Swan's Pride. And then Can Karma on the outside of Dulcify. Three or four lengths regimental honor a length regal jester and gilby is last out of the straight they've got 1900 to go and bell talk led a length and a half to sovereign shell two lengths further back hasten lass on the rails pleasant prince in the box seat Two lengths to Teddy Doon, Swan's Pride's on it, it's inside, and then two and a half lengths to Can Kama. One to Dulcify, two lengths to Regimental Honor, a length Regal Jester, and two away is Gilby. 1,600 out now, and the leader getting out off the rails a bit, Bell Talk, led about four lengths, the boy letting her slip along now. And she's about five or six lengths in front now from Sovereign Shell and one to Hasten Lass. A length further back, Pleasant Prince, a half to Teddy Doon, two lengths to Swan's Pride, two to Can Kama. Dulcify dropped about three lengths away, and then Regimental Honor, Regal Jester, and Gilby. Has they went towards the 1200 meter mark now and the leader bell talks out about 15 lengths to hasten lass pleasant prince taken off the fences moving around the outside with teddy doon who's going to take them up and he's down there a uh, pleasant prince has fallen lost the rider at the 1200 the boys all right a thousand to go now bell talk about eight lengths only to sovereign shell and on the outside teddy doon five lengths away hasten lass another five to ken karma they're followed on the rail swan pride four lengths now to dulcify as they close on the leader next regimental honor from regal jester and gilby coming up the side past the 700 meter mark and sovereign shell is with the them to take the lead from Bell Talk. Teddy Doon is now third, two lengths to Ken Karma coming around the outside. Here's Regimental Honor and Dulcify making their runs and the field packs right up with Regal Jester joining in. On the corner, 600 to go. Sovereign Shell the leader. In second place, Regimental Honor. Ken Karma's gone and so is Dulcify. I don't think it can win. On the corner they race now. Sovereign Shell the leader. Regimental Honor's out after it. They're clear of Ken Karma, followed by Teddy Doon. Then Dulcify at the head of the others, followed by Gilby. Sovereign Shell tackled by Regimental Honor. It's Sovereign Shell joined by Regimental Honor from Ken Karma. On the outside, Regimental Honor takes the lead. Ken Karma coming at it near the line. Regimental Honor stopping. Ken Karma's grabbing it quickly. It's close. And Ken Karma won at a nostril. Two Regimental Honor. Third on the inside, Sovereign Shell. Then Gilby and Dulcify from Teddy Doon. Further back, Swan's Pride, followed then by Regal Jester, Hasten Lass, and Bell Talk, a long last with the riderless horse, Pleasant Prince, coming over the line. Bill Roy Higgins has uh, limped into the ambulance. He fell uh, from Fle uh, Pleasant Prince, and he's limped into the ambulance. He sat on the track. The ambulance men got him up, and he limped into the ambulance. <coughs> it's a photo finish for the 1978 Australia Derby. The judges called for a photo. 
to separate the fast finishing Ken Karma on the outside, who I feel might have got up in the last stride and beaten regimental honour, but there's only a nose in it. A photo finish between Ken Karma on the outside and regimental honour over on the rails. Well, Bell Talk has made the race as far as a spectacle is concerned, racing away with a big lead of about 15 lengths at the middle stages. The second sensation, of course, was then Pleasant Prince losing the rider Roy Higgins just after the 1200 metre mark. As we look at the replay now, Ken Karma there in the blue and yellow. He's out after these leaders. Sovereign Shell in front. Regimental Honor gets to it at the 150. And he's three lengths in front of Ken Karma. Didn't look as though he could get beaten, but there's the number. Number three, Ken Karma's won the derby. Number three, Ken Karma. Alan Trevena is first, finishing doggedly down the outside. Regimental Honor still in front with <coughs> only feet to go as they draw to the line. But Ken Karma on the outside, finishing doggedly, draws level now as the post in sight. They're level, they hit it, and you can see it. He's won it by a nostril. Number three, Ken Karma, Alan Trevena first. Number six, Regimental Honor, Peter Moran second. Number seven, Sovereign Shell, Yves St. Martin third. Officially fourth, number one, Dulcify. And fifth, number two, Gilby. And congratulations to Bill Collins on a top call once again for the Channel 7 Network. We'll be back with more action here at Ascot. Firstly, these messages. Scenes of jubilation back here at Ascot today, and Bill, what a tremendous finish that was between Ken Kummer and Regimental Honour. A marvellous finish, Gary, and Regimental Honour, there was just no betting all the way down the straight. Particularly if you didn't know Ascot Racecourse, you'd <coughs> say the race was all over. But knowing Ascot and that 21-foot climb up the hill, second time around, Ken Kummer proved what a dogged and determined racehorse he is to to get up and he scored right on the line i'm just having a look over there at the margin it's up now short half head the margin can't get closer short half head a length and a half between second and third dulcify was four three lengths away and the time was two minutes 28 and 55 hundredths of a second well bill i think another pleasing feature was i saw roy higgins get out of the ambulance he walked ducked under the running rail walked across the track twiddled his whip around, waved it to the crowd as much as to say, I'm OK, and I think that's uh, a very important factor too. Now, whether he will ride in the international stakes next race, of course, will be very interesting whether they'll allow him to ride. Well, Alan Trevina, full of smiles, stepping off the scales. Also, uh, Peter Moran from Regimental Honour. There's Yves St. Martin, <coughs> who rode the third place, get a sovereign shell, stepping off the fourth rider on the scales. Now, Gilby, which ran a very, or uh, fifth, rather, a very uh, good run indeed. And there's the winner, Ken Karma. The horse that came over here, I think he was a maiden, wasn't he, Jack? He was a he maiden performer, over? Bill. I saw him run in August in uh, New Zealand. He ran uh, third last in a maiden race the day Uncle Remus was beaten. Uh, he came over as a maiden, but uh, with a good reputation. Uh, then, of course, he struck form in Melbourne. He's gone on and on, and now he's won the Australian Derby. Well, he, his first uh, big race, I suppose, was the Geelong Derby Trial Stakes, which he won in magnificent fashion. And uh, then we saw a very... Um, very unlucky performance by him in that wait for age race at Flemington, the uh, McKinnon Stakes, Stakes, in which he ran third and, uh, you know, against the best horses in Australasia. And at that stage, too, he was uh, on, on the market and an offer of $40,000 was virtually accepted but because he's such a family horse. And uh, Dr. Sullivan said, well, if I sold him, he said, I'll be divorced. And he said, I can't afford to be divorced because I've got nine children. Well, it's correct weight's up there for both of them now. Weight is right for the numbers three, six, and seven in the derby. Ken Karma was bred by Dr. Sullivan and N.J. Taylor in New Zealand, raced by Dr. J.J. and M.T. Sullivan. A bay cult, three-year-old by Skyhorse Hawk II from Popper's Girl, trained by B. Meyer and ridden in great style by Alan Trevina, who showed tremendous vigour in that last 50 metres of the race. It was almost unbelievable, the vigour that Alan showed. Well, he always rides well in very big races, and he's a great big race rider. Dulcify, disappointing, Jack. The, very disappointing. The field strung out. <coughs> 
but uh, John Miller saved every inch of ground on Dulcify. They packed up near the 600, and there wouldn't be five lengths between first and last, and yet the leaders went away from him again at the turn, and he, he disappointed me, I must confess. Well, the Canadian jockey, Sandy Hawley, he pr pr uh, provided the early thrills when he let uh, Bell Talk go to that 20-length uh, lead, and uh, when something like that happens in a classic race like this, well, anything's likely to happen, isn't it? Well, that's true, and I think the reason he did let it go yeah. like that was I noticed it was hanging around near the 1600. It was in front and was inclined to pull and got out about four, four or five off the fence, and I think Sandy said to himself, well, what the hell, let's yeah. let it go. Let's go, and, of course, Eve St. Martin ran a, rode a brilliant race on... The, on uh, oh, that, that's young... Uh, Bindi Harris, who's uh, putting the sash on the, uh, the winner. Bindi, of course, is the daughter of Rolf Harris, and she's come back all the way with her father and mother to decorate the winner of the Australian Derby, and that's Bindi Harris. So she doesn't have to put two sashes on after all. Well, she nearly did, Jack. It's won by about an inch and a quarter. <laughs> well, I don't know whether margin. who... Because I said to her, over Pete, I said to her at lunch, what happens if it's dead heat? And, well, she got all flustered, so... Uh, she was nearly uh, in that position, wasn't she? Well, she was. Perhaps she was relieved when I said it had won by a nose. Well, she knew you said it. Well, of course she did. <laughs> well, it was the accurate one. There's, there's Ken Carmen in the background, the, the Highland Pipers making a very spectacular scene, and the official presentation about to take place any moment now. We have... Uh, I see Sir Ernest Lestier down there too, Bill, the right. chair of the West Australian Turf Club, along with the uh, committee members, of course all set for the presentation. And that's Dr. Sullivan in the white suit. Uh, very, uh, he's got his back to us at the moment. He's talking to uh, one of the committee men there. Another, that's a strange thing, they're two doctors talking to each other. Well, it's just what I need. I might go and see them <laughs> check out to the <laughs> event, I can tell you. A little later on, gentlemen, we'll have interviews too from uh, Keith Hillier down there and also Jim Chadwick joining us here today on this big coverage around Australia for the Channel 7 Network. Well, the race to follow this will be also staying on to cover, of course, as the um, Harry Bolton International, in which the one scratching is Battle Fury. And uh, Roy Higgins, he looked all right as he went back, Jack, and I oh, think, yes. I think he'll, he'll be trying desperately to ride in this. Well, he waved and flicked his whip around and waved it around and indicated he was quite OK. Fine. Here's the chairman of the West Australian Turf Club about to speak, and that is Sir Ernest Lestia. Sir Charles and Lady Court, Premier of Western Australia, Mr. Cromlin, Cromwell Harris and Mrs. Cromwell Harris, Mr. and Mrs. Ralph Harris and Miss Bindi Harris, ladies and gentlemen, thanks very much indeed, Ralph, for coming over to make this day for us and to present this trophy. I'd like you to present it to uh, this, uh, the owner of this very good horse who ran a spectacular race in the LKS McKinnon Stakes at Flemington which indicated that he was probably one of the best three-year-olds in Australia, and here he is today winning the Australian Derby. I present to you Mr. Rolf Harris. Thank you. It's my very great pleasure to present this trophy, especially as I was talking to the joint owner just before the race, and uh, we're talking about drawing the, the places for the races which we did earlier on and uh, I mentioned that I thought I'd got his horse a good uh, a good barrier position in the in some race at a later date and uh, coming down to present the the trophy we passed him and he hadn't he brought horses to campaign and I would particularly like to thank my good friend Dr Jim Clancy and uh, Mr. John Davis, who have been of such terrific assistance to me, my family, to Barney Meyer, Sean, and the horse. And finally, I'd like to thank Sean, my son, who was the strapper for the horse and who's looked after him well. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. I'm very grateful that you were able to see the horse for such a performance. Thank you. Dr. John Sullivan, ladies and gentlemen. This beautiful trophy which is held for a year, made uh, by Ainsley Pottery in England. It shows the winner of the inaugural Australian Derby, Diana, here, which was run in 1972, as you know. Beautiful trophy, beautiful trophy. You keep that for a year only. But uh, this is the trophy for you to take away with you. 
in memory of this fantastic day. I'd like to also uh, call for a... Oh, yes, he's just remembered something. <laughs> Back to John Sullivan, Dr John. I don't think I did justice, ladies and gentlemen, in my speech to the tremendous satisfaction I have as a, a race person in acknowledging the wonderful performance of the Committee of the Western Australian Turf Club in organising a race like this. We're all here today and we've been able to acknowledge the sponsorship which the committee have arranged and it is the sponsors that have, have made racing possible and who see a continuing enlargement of the Australian racing scene and I think that the committee are to be congratulated and I hope you will forgive me by if I say this, I don't mean to be patronising, I just think that it, it's, it's right and proper that I should acknowledge the sponsorship which they have arranged. Thank you. Super, thank you very much. I'd like to congratulate Barney Meyer, the trainer. Tremendous job done, Barney. Terrific. Do you want to say a few words at this juncture? Yeah, good. Uh, I'd just like to thank the West Australian Turf Club and the, all the people over here for the wonderful time they've given us. Uh, thank you. And ladies and gentlemen, a tremendous hand for Alan Trevina, the traditional whip. <laughs> tremendous race, you gave all of us heart failure. Fantastic. Would you like to tell us a little bit about it from, from your viewpoint? Well, just quickly, thank you, Master. Oh. Sir, Mrs. Deer, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, it's a great thrill to come to Perth and it's a great thrill to win the Australian, uh, Australian Derby. I was hoping I could and now I have. And just to be honest with you, coming around the home turn in the Derby, I thought, well, there's a good bit of money for third stake money. About 80 metres from the post, I thought, well, I can run second. It's a bit better second stake money. And when I hit the line, I said, oh, how I've won. Thank you very much. <laughs> now it's been, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much indeed, Rolf Harris. Very kind of you to come and do this. Right, top sport, top entertainment, and the presentation of the trophy for the Channel 7 $200,000 Australian Navy made by our own Rolf Harris. We'll be back with more of top action in sport from Ascot shortly. Back at Ascot in Western Australia for the Channel 7 Sporting Network. And shortly we'll be going down to Jimmy Chadwick with a series of interviews down there with the connections of our winner today, Ken Kama. And in the meantime, further comments now on the next race ahead on the card today, which is race seven, of course. Back to Bill Collins. And we'll have some comments on the seventh event, of course, which is going to provide a lot of interest too. Well, the uh, Bolton International and the main fancies in this are Junction Girl with Roy Higgins, who's quite okay, Jack. You've seen him come back. Yes, he's walked He's uh, walked down. Matter of fact, he uh, ran down to join the other jockey, so uh, there's not much uh, wrong with Roy. I think he's tried and his bottom might be a little uh, injured, but that's about all. Right, well, he's uh, riding the favourite junction girl. Hart Barn with Sandy Hawley in the saddle. He's given a great chance in the race, too. Yes, uh, he, uh, both those are fighting out the uh, favouritism, Bill, and Western Coast is also well in the market. Right. And the star agreement given a chance too, as we see the uh, the pipers going down the track, and I think Jimmy Chadwick's now there now with Alan Trevino. Yes, he is. Here we go. Here we go. Well, here we are after the running of the Channel Seven, two hundred thousand Australian Derby, and Alan Trevino is a pretty tired man. Yes, I had a very hard ride today, Jim. He's a a game little horse, and as long as you can keep giving it to him, he'll keep giving it to you. I was going to ask you where you thought you had it won, Alan, but I suppose you'll say on the post. That's exactly right. As I said in the presentation, uh, 200 metres from home, I was going to be happy to run third, then I was going to be happy to run second because that was worth a good bit of money. And when I hit the line, well, I was surprised. The horse got a marvellous will to win. He'd done it at Flemington the other day when I rode him. He, he sensed he wasn't in front, he sticks his neck out and he tries very hard to get to the line. He's got a great will to win. I thought the short straight might have been a bit against you, Alan. I was watching you calling the race and watching you about the half mile, yeah. and you did start to get to work hard hands and heels. Yeah, well, actually, I pulled the whip there. Well, I was giving uh, him one every two or three strides to keep his mind on the job, and uh, the fast pace suited him. It was a true test of staying, and he's a very game little horse. Hattie, you've written there, you've put your leg over of some mighty three rolls, Alan. How do you rate him as the three rolls you've ridden? Well, 
He's not as good as Saran, but he's a very good horse. Because she was an absolute champion, but he's a very good three-year-old. Uh, his greatest claim to fame is his mighty will to win, like I said before. He's a horse that, when he feels he's not in front, he just tries to get to the front. And if you can keep with him, he'll keep giving it. And uh, he's got a great will to win, will make him a top horse. Do you think the next step might be the Perth Cup? Oh, well, if it is, I'm sure I won't be riding him, because I think he's got about 46 kilos. And my mother said when I was born, I was 48. You're putting on some weight, Helen. Yeah, I was 48 kilos, not eight years of age, Jim. <laughs> Anyway, Ellen, was a fantastic ride. You used all your vigour at the finish and uh, you were pretty tired when you pulled up, but you landed the bickies. Yes, well, it's a great thrill and there's a lot of, you're very tense before a big race like this and I was a bit worried the horse was very keyed up before the race and uh, once I went out on the track and he canted up to the, to the start, quiet, I knew I had him then and with the singing must have soothed him. He's been in Australia long enough to know the words to Walsing Matilda. You haven't been able to sing in your life. <laughs> no, I can't even whistle, but the horse knows the words to Walsing Matilda because he's been here a month, see? You can't even play golf. Oh, when I used to have you as a partner, we do it all right, didn't we? <laughs> Good on you, Alan. Thanks, Congratulations nice. for winning the Channel 7 Australian Derby, $200,000. And now we go... I'm sorry, is this national? This is national. Hi, girls. Hi, gal. See you tonight. <laughs> That's the gal, Alan's wife. Well, now it's back to our host, Gary Carvoff. Thank you, Jimmy Chadwick, very much indeed. Well, shortly we'll have Keith Hillier down there introducing the various international jockeys for us. But in the meantime, uh, Bill and Jack, it's probably an opportunity to take a flashback, as far as our viewers are concerned, right around Australia, on the tremendous form guide in race five, the CB Cox Stakes. Yes, a wonderful race, a magnificent performance here by the horse that I think may win the Perth Cup. Here they come round the turn. And they pack up on the home turn. Alva Bray in front. Caduceus. Here's Arwan and Meliador down the outside. Taxan back behind them on the plate. As they set sail for the running. Arwan went for the setter. Meliador down the outside. Caduceus boxing on. Taxan back behind them with Alva Bray. It's Arwan and Meliador. Meliador and Arwan. Here's the battle. Arwan under the whip. And Meliador ridden very confidently hands and heels. Jackie comes into that uh, cup with only 51 and a half kilos on his back after carrying today. Let's just check again in the race book. Uh, he carried 57 Seven. kilos today, and that's a mighty drop. Five and a half kilos for a horse who's obviously a died in the wool state. Well, he's going to be very hard to beat, Bill. The horse I like to run to is um, Taxan the Grey. Had a beautiful run in third place all the way. Uh, he wasn't knocked about at all in the finishes. I think the people could see in the picture there because he couldn't win. I'm not uh, suggesting anything else. It was just that he couldn't win a run a place. John Miller didn't knock him about. Taxan obviously wanted the run, and I would say that uh, he's the horse. Uh, Taxan and the winner of the two are going to be, they're the ones who are going to fight it out at this stage. Yes, it was. Uh, the, the, here are the runners coming into the yard now for the, uh, the H.G. Bolton International. And... Uh, the jockeys will be introduced to the crowd and to our viewers right throughout Australia on Channel 7 in just a few moments by Keith Hillier, racing editor of the Melbourne Sun. And, of course, this is the race where the horses play second fiddle to the jockeys. I would definitely say that uh, that is the truest statement we've heard for many a long day because uh, the best rider here is going to have a tremendous uh, opportunity to win the race that's why I think Roy Higgins, Sandy Hawley may fight it out in Junction Girl and Hart Barn. Well, Jimmy Chadwick is going to be here with us very shortly to call this event. Jimmy, of course, has been helping to play host to all these boys while they've been here, and he'll continue to do so. And uh, he'll be here in just a few moments to call this spectacular race for us. Well, I must say there's only one reason for this, and uh, I'm going to say it. Bill is not very well. As a matter of fact, it's an amazing... Uh, performance that Bill Collins has put up here today to be here to describe the derby. Bill has a very bad virus in the throat. Uh, he's not at all well and he sat in this uh, box here and given one of the most vivid and great descriptions of the Australian derby. Jack, if I said I'd been in bed for, with a wog for three days, that would not be an Irish joke. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Congratulations again to you, Bill. Fellas, stand by because I think Keith Hilly is ready to go now with his introductions of those international jockeys. Shortly, we'll be uh, going back to Keith Hillier for the introduction, of course, to this outstanding...